This tools tip will demonstrate the CR8000 design gateway and design force process for working with differential pairs and skew groups. We'll first use design gateway to set up and enter constraints for the differential pairs and the skew groups, and then we'll use design force to both interactively route and automatically route both items. Here we have design gateway on the left and design force on the right. We'll be working with the MIPI DSI data bus, which consists of five differential pairs. The clock differential pair will be used as the base when we create the SKU group, and the rest of the bus is made up of four data differential pairs. The MIPI DSI bus starts at IC1, goes through resistors, and ends at IC7. First, we'll start with design gateway to set up the differential pairs and enter the constraints. To set up the differential pairs, we'll use the constraint browser. Currently, the MIPI DSI differential pairs are simply signal nets. They're not designated as differential pairs, and their pin pairs have not yet been identified. We'll start with identifying them as differential pairs. To do so, within the Edit menu, there's the new Diff Pairs wizard that can assist us with this process. The wizard keys off of the positive net name ending with an underscore P and negative net name ending with an underscore N to list all the potential differential pairs in the design. As you can see, the MIPI DSI differential pairs have been identified by the wizard, so we simply need to OK the form and those differential pairs are created. Even though the differential pairs have been created, we also need to identify the pin pairs. One method to create the pin pairs is to select all the differential pairs and from the assist menu select new multiple pin pairs. The new multiple pin pairs wizard allows us to select the driver component, in this case we'll select IC1, and the receiver component, in this case we'll select IC7, and then OK the form. Now when we look at any of the differential pairs within the group, we'll also see that the pin pairs have been properly created and associated with each differential pair. Now that we've created the differential pairs and the pin pairs associated with the differential pairs, we're now ready to enter some constraints. We'll select the routing tab and we'll enter a min length, max length, and max skew length for all the differential pairs. In this case, we'll enter 19 as the min length, 24 as the max length, and 1 as the max skew length. We're now ready to create the skew group for the MIPI DSI bus. The skew group will help us ensure that we can enter constraints for min relative skew and max relative skew. One way to create the skew group is again with all of the differential pairs selected, use the assist menu, new skew group option. On the new skew group form, we can once again select the driver component, select the receiver component, but here we also, as previously stated, want to set the base to be the clock differential pair, and then we'll set the SKU group name. We'll OK the form, and now when we filter within the constraint browser on SKU groups, we see the MIPI DSI SKU group available to us, and we can set the constraints for min relative length, max relative length, and max SKU length, which we'll set to minus 2, 2, and 2. And again, the min relative length and max relative length are in relation to the base, which in this case is the clock differential pair. At this point, we're ready to forward annotate the differential pair and SKU group information along with the related constraints to design force. Prior to forward annotating, if we were to look at the MIPI DSI data nets in the Design Force Constraint Browser, we notice that they're not yet identified as differential pairs. Furthermore, if we were to filter on SKU groups, we notice that the MIPI DSI SKU group is not yet available. Finally, if we were to begin routing one of these paths, it would route as a single trace rather than as a differential pair. This will all be addressed when we forward annotate the differential pair and SKU group information that we created in Design Gateway into Design Force. When we forward annotate, we specify both the net list and the design rule list. As such, the differential pair and SKU group information will become available within Design Force. Now that the forward annotation has completed, we can again open the constraint browser. This time, when we filter on SKU groups, we see the MIPI DSI SKU group. And if we scroll over within the constraints, we see the max length SKU, min relative length SKU, and max relative length SKU that we entered in Design Gateway. We didn't intend for the min relative length to actually be minus 2. So we can either go back to design gateway correct and re-forward annotate, or we can just change the value here and then back annotate when it's convenient. If we switch the view to look at the signals, we'll see that the MIPI DSI are now designated correctly as differential pairs. And if we were to select them and look at the routing tab, we notice our min pin pair length of 19 and max pin pair length of 24 have been forward annotated. And if we scroll to the right, we'll also notice that our max skew value of 1 has also correctly forward annotated. At this point, we're ready to begin 
manually and or automatically routing the differential pairs for the MIPI DSI bus. When we manually route the differential pairs, we have two options. We can use the route differential pair functionality or we can use the trunking functionality. With the route differential pair functionality, you notice we have several options under pull-in tracks for pad exit and entry, and we also could turn tangent arc on and set the radius of the tangent arc. As we begin routing the differential pair, you'll notice the routing balloon in the upper left corner dynamically updates to show us two pieces of information. In the top part of the form, it displays the pin pair length for the positive and negative signal, and in the lower portion of the form, it shows the skew range for the overall skew group. As we route this differential pair, you'll notice that the routing balloon is continually updating both the pin pair lengths and the skew range. We'll route from IC1 to the resistors on the conductor 2 layer, and then we'll route from IC7 to the resistors on the conductor 3 layer. Notice as we route, the routing balloon is continually updating to let us know, again, both for the differential pair that we're routing, if the pin pairs are within the constraints, and also for the overall skew group, how we're doing with respect to the skew range. If we adjust our view so that we can look at both the Design Force Canvas and the Constraint Browser simultaneously, you notice that the length for the differential pairs displayed in the routing balloon, 22.653 and 22.191, is also available in the Constraint Browser if we change to the Pin Pair view. We can also change back to the Selected Tree Item view, scroll to the right, and notice that the skew for the differential pair that we have routed is 0.462, again displayed both here in the Constraint Browser and within the routing balloon and it was within our max skew length for the differential pair of 1.0. The second option for routing differential pairs is the trunking router. As we begin to manually route the clock differential pair, you notice the options within the trunking form are different than the options within the route differential pair form. You also notice that as we route the differential pair, the routing balloon displayed in the upper left is not updating to show us the actual length. It will, however, update once we complete the route. As we complete manually routing the last differential pair, you'll notice that both the differential pair pin pair length and the skew range are green within the routing balloon. If we also look at the information within the constraint browser, we'll notice that all the differential pairs are within the maximum skew value of 1. If we switch to the pin pair view, we'll notice that all their lengths are within the range of 19 to 24. And if we were to look at the skew group, we'll notice that we're in range as compared to the base for the minimum relative skew but not for the maximum relative skew. We're also not in range for the max skew length. We'll notice that our base net, the clock differential pair, is actually the shortest differential pair. So to address our issue with relative skew, the easiest fix would be to simply slightly lengthen the clock differential pair. We've routed the clock differential pair with the trunking router, and this allows us to use the lengthen functionality to add length to both the positive and negative portions of the differential pair at the same time. By increasing the length from 20 to 22, we should see better results with respect to our maximum skew length parameter. As expected, our min relative length is still within the constraint value, but now our max relative length is also within the constraint value. As stated earlier, we can also automatically route the differential pairs. In this case, we've entered a dragon boundary around the differential pairs, dragon being the Zucan automatic router, and we can now run the Dragon Router using a routing strategy specifically created for working with differential pairs. We simply start the auto route, wait for it to complete, close the information forms, and accept the routing. In this case, a portion of the differential pairs have been routed on layer 2, and the rest have been routed on layer 3. That concludes this technical webinar. During this webinar, we've demonstrated how differential pairs and SKU groups can be set up during schematic capture and design gateway using the constraint browser, how we can then add constraints to those differential pairs and SKU groups, and how we can forward annotate all of that information to CR8000 Design Force. Once in CR8000 Design Force, we demonstrated two options for manually routing the differential pairs, and we've also shown how the automatic router can be used to complete the differential pairs. Finally, we've shown how the design Force Constraint Browser can be used in tandem with the Design Force Canvas to review the actual values against the constraint values.